So banned items, freedom of expression, and flat out being nice. Disney World has had to make some major rule changes for its parks recently. And if you want to make sure you're staying on Disney's good side, then you've come to the right DFB video. Hey everybody, it's AJ for Disney Food Blog. Disney has had to make some drastic and rather interesting changes in their rule book lately, and we're here to discover why that is. Not only will knowing about these rules help you stay in Disney's good graces and, you know, be able to stay in the park, but many of these adjustments could improve your visit to help you have a way more successful trip. So it's best to know about them now and not learn about them when it's too late in the game. First up, this change is brand new. Space Mountain is banning certain items. One moment, you're trying to record that bright blue light up space tunnel for your friends and family back home, and the next, your phone slips out of your hand, and it's gone in the black hole that is Space Mountain. Roller coasters and loose articles tend to not mix very well, no matter what high-speed thrill ride you're on. But back in December of 2022, Disney decided they wanted to put an end to loose articles being carried into Magic Kingdom Space Mountain coaster once and for all. On Space Mountain, guests are now no longer allowed to have any handheld devices out like cameras, phones, or other gadgets and gizmos while riding the ride. Those items must be secured in your pockets, placed in the storage pouch in front or to the side of you, or left with someone who isn't already planning on riding. While it's not entirely clear what straw broke the camel's back to make this change official, we're guessing Disney wanted to help decrease the number of lost items that Space Mountain has claimed over the years. Just because Space Mountain's one of the slowest coasters on property, only reaching speeds of up to 28 miles per hour, those sudden sharp turns and drops in the dark could be the main reason why many articles have been claimed by the Space Mountain Maw time and again. Don't worry, you're not missing out on much when you don't record this ride, since the majority of it happens in the dark anyways. The video's not gonna turn out all that exciting. But here's some good news for you. There's still an on-ride photo that Space Mountain will take of you and your group while you're blasting through the tunnel, so you don't have to be left completely photoless. And even more good news, Disney recently announced that beginning in the next few months, guests who purchased the premium Disney Genie Plus travel planning feature on the My Disney Experience app, they're going to receive free digital photo pass downloads for all attraction photos that are taken on the date of their purchase. And yes, this will include those Space Mountain pics, so smile for the camera. This next rule that Disney added has nothing to do with guests and everything to do with cast members. In 2021, Disney added a fifth key to their company culture called inclusion. And the fifth key is now the heart of the five keys, according to chairman of Disney Parks, Experiences and Products, Josh Tomorrow. The purpose of this change was to create a place where everyone is welcome and take action to create meaningful change. So the most important thing is that Disney had to reevaluate its policies regarding the Disney look or how cast members show up for work. Previously, these rules struck how cast members could wear their hair and accessorize, how long their facial hair could be, if they could have facial hair, how long their fingernails could be, and if they could have them painted, and what colors. Now, these policies provide greater flexibility when it comes to personal expression, including hairstyles, jewelry, nail styles, costume choices, tattoos. Basically, cast members are allowed to express a little more individuality while at work, while still keeping up with the overall Disney theming in regard to their costumes and name tags. Keep in mind that it's not just cast members who need to make sure that they sport what is still deemed appropriate though. Guests are going to need to make sure what they're wearing is park friendly too, otherwise you will be turned away at the front gates. All the clothing guidelines for guests are listed on the Disney World website, but as long as you're not planning on wearing something totally vulgar and or not planning on wearing a full-on cosplay of your favorite character during non-Halloween party hours, then you shouldn't have anything to worry about. Just make sure to wear clothes you can be comfortable in, especially when it comes to your choice of shoes because, oh my gosh, shoes, very important when it comes to walking around Disney World all day. The next rule that Disney recently had to enforce are selfie sticks. Such a convenient little gadget and yet such an utter nuisance. When selfie sticks first became a household namer on 2014, you could spot one almost everywhere you looked in Disney World. And while they were great for capturing a family photo when there wasn't a photo pass photographer, many Disney goers also used these to record fireworks shows from up above the crowds and they were even used to record the rides. Many guests were way too transfixed by their phone screens hovering in front of their faces so there were constant collisions into objects and other guests, and you can imagine what riding Big Thunder Mountain Railroad with a selfie stick ended in. Not, not good. So by the summer of 2015, Disney officially added the selfie stick to the list of banned items because of the potential hazard it posed to guests. At least that's the nice way to put it. I won't sugarcoat it for you. These things were a pain. Totally breaks you out of the immersive atmosphere and drops you into a new world of selfie sticks. Selfie sticks everywhere. So if you're looking to take a picture with your phone in front of one of the main park icons with your whole family without having to pay for Memory Maker or individual 
individual PhotoPass photos, you can always ask a PhotoPass photographer to take a picture on your phone instead. More than likely, they'll be able to do that no problem and free of charge. Now, something I have noticed in Disneyland recently is that the PhotoPass photographers won't take a picture with your phone, but the character attendants will, so something to keep an eye on. Another brand new rule that Disney has just put in writing on their website is being nice. Yep, Disney recently added a curious new update on their website, which you can find on their preparing for your visit page for both Disneyland and Disney World. This update is simply labeled as courtesy with a message that reads, be the magic you want to see in the world. The message continues when you click on the read more button and states, you must always remember to treat others with respect, kindness, and compassion. Those who can't live up to this simple wish may be asked to leave Walt Disney World World Resort. And then under all of that, you'll find a hyperlink that'll direct you to all of Disney World's property rules. Now, I imagine this is a result of the anger and verbal abuse taken by the cast members during the pandemic when people had to wear masks and didn't want to wear them. I think that's a huge issue. And that brought this issue to the front of park leadership's minds, I'm guessing. But the truth is cast members have always had to withstand verbal abuse and attacks from guests who are angry and upset. Why? Because they're spending a lot of money and things aren't going their way. And for some reason, they think yelling at cast members is what's going to make that change. So I, for one, am super glad that it's now in writing that if someone is antagonistic and inappropriate to a cast member or to another guest, they can be physically removed from the park. Now, I know this may feel like a no-brainer rule to you. In fact, I hope this is a no-brainer rule for you. But when you're hot and tired and stressed from waiting in lines all day long, sometimes that magic Disney's asking you to exude isn't there. When you were someone in your group isn't feeling magical, check in with each other. Is it time to get out of the sun and into the AC? How long has it been since anyone's had water? Should you start breaking out the trail mix and jerky snacks from your park bag? Or was someone's request overlooked and feelings have been hurt? Courtesy goes a long way with other guests, cast members, and within your own group too. I can tell you personally, my husband and I have been in more fights in Disney World than anywhere else. It happens and it happens a lot. Okay, the next rule that Disney has recently added, those restrictions on wagon and stroller sizes. This is not something we've talked about in a long time. They added this a couple years ago, and I think I've got a lot of new viewers here who might need to hear this one, just so they don't drag a stroller all the way to Disney World and realize they can't use it there. Disney World is totally cool with you bringing your own stroller for those smaller kids who may not want to walk around the parks all day long. After all, if walking around the parks is a lot for us to take on, then imagine how it's going to feel for them. And sometimes we do recommend even bringing a stroller for older kids that don't need them at home, but maybe five, six, seven year olds might need a stroller in Disney World. Just for those super, super long rope drop to fireworks days. But back in 2019, Disney added some extra restrictions to which strollers would be allowed in their parks. Now strollers can be no larger than 31 inches wide and 52 inches long. As for stroller wagons, you can't bring those at all. So plan to leave them at home. Disney put these new rules in place to help cut down on bottlenecked paths that could lead to many more crushed heels. And if you're stroller doesn't meet those guidelines, you can always plan to rent one directly from the park instead. Disney offers two types of strollers, single strollers and double strollers. And if you decide to rent a single one, the price is $15 per day. But if you're looking to rent a stroller for multiple days or the length of your stay, the price goes down to $13 per day. The double strollers are a little more expensive with a daily price of $31. Or once again, guests can purchase a length of stay rental ticket for multiple days for $27 per day. With a length of stay rental, you can prepay the number of days you plan on using a stroller, just show a cast member your receipt at the stroller rental location at the front of the parks to receive your stroller for the day. You won't be able to take that stroller back to your hotel with you. Now, this next rule is one I wish that they would enforce at every Disney fast food location, but I know they've tried before and I know it hasn't worked. So I'm glad at least it's happening in one place. Now, I know it's tempting to want to save your group a table while one person waits in line for food but Disney's trying to put a stop to this with one of their newest quick service offerings. And believe me, it seems illogical, but it makes sense. If you're going to Connections Eatery at Epcot, you must have your food before you can find your seat. This helps keep tables from filling up and leaving guests who actually ordered food without a table. I think they're doing it at Connections simply because there is a Starbucks there as well. And I think a lot of people are trying to come and sit at the tables at the counter service location instead of sitting at tables at the coffee location. And so that's why they're doing it here. But honestly, it makes sense at every counter service location. You could be standing in line waiting to order your food for 20 minutes or more. And that's more than enough time for another family to eat an entire meal. So if your family's taking up a table while you're standing 20 minutes in line for food, you're keeping a table from 
someone who could actually just be eating their food and be gone by the time you get your food. So again, I'm sure we've all been in the situation where you walk into a fast food restaurant, it's noon, you've got your tray of food and there's literally not a single table available and most of the people sitting there aren't even eating. <laughs> It's frustrating, so that's the logic and rationality of, of doing this, but I'm really, really glad it's at least happening at Connections Eatery. Now, if you're just looking for a place to sit in the AC for a bit, but you don't really need a bite to eat at the moment, try hitting up the Odyssey building instead. Now, this is located off to the left before you enter the World Showcase. It's got a lot of space and AC, as well as vintage-style ride posters lining the walls and rotating festival food booths as well. It's also the place you're gonna find the Baby Care Center and the First Aid Center, and two fairly unoccupied bathrooms, one on the outside, one on the inside. In short, the Odyssey building can serve as your oasis during an otherwise hot and busy Epcot day, at least when a festival is going on. Next on our list is the ever controversial Park Pass Reservation System. Despite the historic 2020 closures having happened almost three years ago, I know, boggles my mind too, we've been in this world for this long, some of the rules created after the parks reopened still remain in effect. One of those is the infamous Park Pass Reservation System. The Disney Park Pass Reservation System is an online tool that allows guests to make reservations to visit any of the four parks. This means right after you purchase your park tickets, you're going to need to reserve your spot in each of the parks that you want to visit on a particular day of your trip. Otherwise, park ticket or not, you are not going to be allowed to get in. That's right, I will say that again. Even if you paid for a park ticket, if you don't have a park reservation, you won't be able to get in the park. Now, Disney originally implemented this system as part of their new COVID safety measures to limit guest capacity and promote social distancing right when Disney first reopened. They planned on having this system around for maybe a couple of years tops. But after Disney learned how well this service can help them keep track of how many guests are entering their parks each day and cap off the park's capacity when need be, and also know a much more about the guests entering the parks, like what kind of park ticket do they have, are they staying in a hotel, etc., etc., they've decided to keep it in effect until further notice. Now, don't let this second step intimidate you too badly. Disney will lead you through the reservation process right after you purchase your tickets, and it's pretty easy to modify these. But if you're nervous about booking tickets for a park that's already reached park pass capacity, you can view the park availability before purchasing your tickets. The availability calendar is very easy to get to on the Disney World website. The calendar will be color coded in three parts. If a date is marked as yellow, that means some parks still have availability while some are booked up. If a date is green, you've got the all clear to book whatever park you want to. And if a date is gray, that means all parks have been booked up solid and you'll have to choose a different date to visit. This rule is probably one of the most controversial that's been introduced recently and I think it will continue to be for quite some time. Now, hold on everyone, this isn't the end of the Park Pass Reservation narrative in this video. There were some recent Park Pass Reservation changes and rules implemented for Disney annual pass holders. Even if you aren't a pass holder, you'll still wanna hear about this. Now, I talked a great deal about the annual pass holder controversy in a previous video, which you should check out when you get the chance because it's baffling. But let me hit you with an abbreviated version for now. Pass holders in both Disney World and Disneyland are given a certain number of park pass reservations they can make at any given time, just as long as they're not trying to make reservations for days that are blocked out or are already booked up solid by other guests. Now, when you purchase the highest priced annual pass in Disney World, AKA the IncrediPass, those block out dates I just mentioned shouldn't be an issue because the top tier passes don't have any block out dates to worry about. However, it seemed Disney was snaking around this block out date promise for its pass holders by claiming that park pass reservations were already booked up when, in reality, those who were paying out of pocket for a single day park ticket on the same days still had plenty of availability. The controversy led to lawsuits filed in both Disney World and Disneyland. And by keeping the park pass system in place, pass holders felt that Disney was continually breaking promises and violating agreements advertising unlimited access to the parks without actually providing said unlimited access. Again, this all gets sticky and has led to annual pass sales being paused, going live again, being paused again, a cycle for sure, as Disney continues to sort things out. But Disney has recently introduced some changes that may appease pass holders at least a little bit. They're turning to address another issue pass holders have been facing for the past few years, and that's the absence of flexibility. Pass holders like having the option to just visit the parks on a whim without having to make park pass reservations weeks in advance. So on January 10th, Disney announced new relaxed park pass reservation rules for all pass holders. Soon, annual pass holders can enter the parks after 2 p.m.
p.m. without needing a reservation. However, there will still be some exceptions. Pass holders will still need to schedule reservations for Saturdays and Sundays in Magic Kingdom because Magic Kingdom is about to be hit with some wild crowds when Tron Light Cycle Run and Happily Ever After come back. Disney hasn't released an official date for when this new rule will go into effect, but we'll keep an eye out and update y'all as we learn more. But what about the non-pass holders? Will Park Pass reservations continue to stay the same for out-of-town guests, or will they be relaxed for everyone else eventually too? Well, in a recent question and answer session with Josh Jamaro, he basically stated to me in so many words that Park Passes are probably going to stick around to the foreseeable future, but Disney is taking steps to make them better and with more flexibility. He actually said these aren't the last changes you're going to see to Park Passes. But for now, park passes for non-pass holders remain the same. If you want to see the parks, then you've got to have them locked in ahead of your trip. Now, when and if park passes change again, we want to make sure you're going to be kept in the loop. So if you want any and all Disney news updates sent straight to your inbox, make sure to sign up for the DFB newsletter ahead of time. It's totally free. We send you all the details, all the news, ASAP, and I'll link the sign up page in the description below. The next groundbreaking rule that Disney put into place recently has to do with smoking. Disney World has never been a place where smoking was overly prominent, but once upon a time, you could find designated smoking sections inside the parks. However, in 2019, those rules changed. For the health and safety of other guests, smoking was completely banned inside the parks and the Disney Springs Shopping District. This canopies cigarettes, vapes, pipes, cigars, etc. Designated smoking areas are still available for those who need them, but they'll just be located outside the parks in Disney Springs instead. There are also designated smoking locations at the Disney World hotels. Just ask a cast member at the front desk to help point you in the right direction. And you knew Disney Genie was going to make an appearance in this list, right? So guests have had mixed feelings toward Disney Genie Plus for a while now. And this planning tool allows you to select lightning lanes for your favorite rides, just like FastPass did back in the day, but now you've got to pay for it. Not only are guests pretty miffed that they got to buy a previously free park benefit, but they've also got to navigate all the constant rule changes that have hit this service since it went live back in 2021. Fortunately, one of the most recent rule changes that was put in place makes Genie Plus way easier though. Now you can modify the lightning lane selections you make without having to flat out cancel them. All you got to do is tap on the lightning lane selection you currently have on your My Disney Experience app and it brings up a little box of options. One of these options is modify plan which will allow you to change your lightning lane to something different or a different time frame if a new one is available that meshes with your schedule better. So why is this option so much better than just canceling your lightning lane altogether? Well, before, when you cancel the lightning lane, your 120-minute timer would reset. This two-hour time frame is considered to be a lightning lane cooldown period, so you'll be able to make another lightning lane selection 120 minutes after you made your last one, even if you haven't been able to use your current reservation. Another reason this is great is because when you used to have to cancel your lightning lane reservation and then go book a new one that you saw, sometimes that new one that you saw would disappear by the time you canceled your old one because someone else snatched it up. So now, even if you don't get the new one, you still have your old one left in place. So it kind of eliminates that stress and the unknown of if I cancel this, I may not be able to get it back. Now, even if you don't completely understand the ever complicated Genie Plus realm, just remember that the root of why we love this change is because you can have way more flexibility added to your Disney day and a lot less stress. To learn more about Disney Genie Plus and how you can master it during your next trip, check out our How to Outsmart Genie Plus video now live on our channel. All right, you may have never noticed this slight Disney Resort change if we hadn't pointed it out. But the reason behind this upcoming change is crucial. So a few years back, Disney made the decision to change their door hanger signs in their hotels from saying do not disturb to room occupied. Once again, a very slight change, but the wording is important. Disney now requires that a cast member enters each occupied room every 24 hours, even when housekeeping services are turned down. This was put in place after a hotel attack in Las Vegas. According to multiple news outlets, the perpetrator actually spent several days inside their room pre-attack, giving them time to fully plan out their course of action. Disney's main priority is to make sure to keep guests safe. By changing the door signs from do not disturb to room occupied, cast members now know that guests are still in their room and would prefer privacy, but it also gives cast members permission to enter the room regardless if they absolutely have to. And since I mentioned housekeeping, let me show you a more recent change that'll be happening 
for the Disney hotels soon. A Disney World cast member recently confirmed with us that all hotels will be switching back to daily housekeeping. After the historic 2020 closures, housekeeping switched over to a modified version. Though Disney was still giving each room a thorough cleaning in between guests, occupied rooms received a light cleaning service, which included things like removing trash and dirty towels and wiping down flat services. Housekeeping will be back by the end of February for all Disney World hotels. No word yet on if you'll be able to decline housekeeping in exchange for a gift card, which was something that was available pre-pandemic for a certain hotel. We will keep you updated, though. And this next rule is one I am so, so happy about. It's going to save me so much money, and hopefully it will for you too. Except you probably don't make as many mistakes as I do. You see, back in the day, yet not so very long ago, if you needed to cancel an advanced dining reservation, you had to give Disney 24 hours notice. Otherwise, you'd be charged a $10 cancellation fee for each person in your dining party. So if four people are eating, that's 40 bucks. But back in November, Disney decided to give us a little more breathing room. Now you can cancel your dining reservations two hours in advance without any sort of cancellation fee. To do this, just click on your reservation in the My Disney Experience app and find that glorious modify button. Why is my new favorite word quickly becoming modify? From there, you should be able to cancel your reservation as long as it falls outside of that two hour window. If it doesn't, you'll be given a number to call to change or modify or cancel. If you can go up to the restaurant itself, if you're nearby to talk to a host in person, you can also see what your options may be. Not only does this new rule add more flexibility and freedom to your day, but it also gives other guests more last minute dining options on the My Disney Experience experiences dining tips board. So that's a win-win. So obviously Disney doesn't throw rules out there just for giggles. There's always a reason they need to be made. But if you're ever confused about what Disney's policies are regarding certain situations, search that Disney World website and see if they've already addressed your question on their FAQ pages. If they haven't, you can always turn your questions to the chat with us function on the My Disney Experience app. That's the chat box featured on the Disney website, or you can call Disney directly. Check out their online phone directory and call the number that'll best fit your specific category of questions. Or if you're already on Disney property, just head to guest relations located in each of the parks or a concierge at your hotel, and they'll be more than happy to help you out. Thanks for listening, everyone, and thanks for watching. We always like doing updates on Disney rules because it really does change your trip dramatically if they've instituted something new. As always, this is AJ for Disney Food Blog, and we'll see you real soon.